So clearly you are quite curious as to what I'll be doing with this in order to make a table saw. Well, let me tell you. First of all, I'll be removing this little piece. These two screws, I'm going to undo and remove this plate. I'm going to measure out the hole and this plate holes in here so that I can move this whole system under the table with this sticking out. But I've got more. It's not just that. It's, it's, it's simple enough and if you want to keep it to that, by all means do it. But what I'm doing to enhance the experience for myself and to make sure I can actually get to do something worthwhile with it, I'll be adding a couple of tweaks of my own. I like tweaking things, I like making plans, I like experimenting with things. So, what we've done is a couple of weeks ago, we saw a tape measure on special at one of the shops we frequent. But this one wasn't special, it was oh, with a whole bunch of bucks and now it's marked down because there's no catch and release system yet. It also doesn't retract at all. It's, it's not in good condition. So, what I'll be doing is using this to enhance the whole table saw, jigsaw, conversion thingy and make it so that I can actually cut straight lines. Now I know my, some of you might say, well just buy a table saw, it's not that expensive. Well, we are trying to use as much as we can for as cheap as possible. So, therefore, special is broken, get it for steel, use it somewhere else. Also, this is, I think, three, uh, five meters long. So, if I'm only using 30 centimeters of this, that much, I can go quite a distance with five meters. So, see? But enough of talking, let's go over to actually measuring out and building this epic thing. I am trying this camera angle. Um, just hoping it works. This way you actually see what I'm doing. I just hope my shadow isn't too much in the way of... Ah, it doesn't look too bad. Alright, so... When it comes to the whole... Taking apart and... Fixing part. Fixing this to the table. I need to tell you why I'm doing this. My jigsaw actually... Had a malfunction and broke... Off the little guide. So... Uh, it's it's not as guarded as it should be. Lordy do do. It's kind of sucky that I'm not allowed to play much music on the radio due to the whole YouTube rules thing. Alright, I'll make it work. At least my mind is full of songs and laughter. This jigsaw functions in the way that the saw blade actually lines up with these holes. So, in order for me to have a accurate measurement, I will need to measure out the whole situation I want to build here and then proceed from there on. So let's jump forward with that. First of all, I just want to get myself a proper center line where I want to get this going and keeping in mind the table structure underneath. This seems like a very good spot that I chose randomly. So I'm going to put on a 25 centimeter line just because it's easier. I'm too lazy to think too hard, so that should be plenty to work with. These little arrows join at a sharp point, and that makes it easier for you to follow the line. I'll demonstrate. Uh, it's so much better now that I've actually got my tools hanging in a 
proper orderly fashion. And that's my line. Okay, so I went, I went ahead and uh, cut these to size that I, I want. That way, I can now go and do this little measurement thingy to make sure that I've got my lines straight when I put these down for my um, stop. So I'm only using about, well, 30 centimeters of tape but I'm not going to be cutting that wide of wood. Seeing as I'm mainly working with pallets, I'll probably just use 20 to 15 centimeters of this. So this works pretty good. So now I'm going to measure out that distance using these. And uh, that should help me get to the point where I actually know what I'm working with. All right, so to the end of the table, I've got 10, 20, 24 centimeters to work with. And if I want to use uh, actual guide, I'm gonna need more space this side. That's why I'm going with 20. Now I've got enough space for a bit of wood or something I'm gonna be using. And now I can line this up perfectly without a hassle of tape and whatever. I know some of you probably didn't see the problem with that, but for me, with what I've been doing at work, it's just uh, it's easier. And uh, it's the method I've been getting used to for quite a while now, so that works for me. Now I've got it all the way here, I can just get my straight line again so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna take these and make small holes in them for use of a probably use a nail or a screw so they can stay in place for when I need them to be exact so I'll be doing that off camera because it's noisy when I drill and all that kind of thing. So give me one second. Okay, so we're full of giggles because things happened and uh, I actually made new strips to incorporate a bigger piece of the end so that I could actually line it up with the line to help myself with the math. Now I have to hurry up because my wife is in an awkward position. So uh, basically now just make sure that you're lining up the, the lines here with the line here and over here so you have an ac accurate these are, this is 20 centimeters it needs to be accurate on both sides so I'm just gonna put a little screw in here it might take a moment okay you can see it, it lines up perfectly there this one still lines up perfectly so my method of and my wife holding onto it is clearly effective right so it's got a little edges turning up but that is not the biggest problem you will encounter with this little exercise if you really if you're really worried about something like this get a piece of perspex put it over and extend your holes through it and or just put a, a lifted piece of perspex over it or there's many ideas of what to do to counter it, but for me, this actually works perfect. So I'm gonna go, get, go ahead and do the, the other one so that I can start getting this mounted. Okay, so here's the bit that's actually rather precise. When measuring from your blade to your little holes there, you need to make sure that your hole for the blade that you drill in a table is actually perfect. Remember you're going to draw your, your hole in this line to make sure this all lines up and therefore matches your uh, guide. So when measuring it, this, once again I'm using one of these just because it's easier. I'm going to do this up here so that you can see. So from the back of my blade to the hole 
There you go. You can see. Uh, I can barely see. It looks like it's. If the camera is not too incorrect, it looks like it's 70, 74 millimeter. Uh, 70. Uh, that's. 34, 34 millimeters from the back of the blade to the first hole. And then from the uh, first hole to the second hole is 25 millimeters. So for own sanity, you go blade to hole number one and hole number two. Two, that distance over there was a 34. This one is a 25. Therefore, I'm going to start measuring from back to front. That means my, uh, I'm going to do this roughly in the middle. I'm going to turn this around so I can actually use it properly. My back hole, that sounds so wrong. A second hole, I'll just put on 70. There we go, very pretty. Then 25 millimeters from there, I'll make my next little mark. Now I know that the distance between them is correct, and also they are in a straight line that makes it so much easier. Now from the from this hole center to the blade's back is 34 millimeters. That means the blades back from the center of this hole is around there. But that doesn't mean we're going to drill the hole there. We need to have the hole big enough to make a, a gap for the blade. The blade, you will see, is just under eight millimeters th uh, wide, thick. I don't know, this distance, it's just over eight millimeters. So I'm going to take eight millimeters from there and then find the center, which is four. That will be the center of my hole for the actual blade. That makes it easier for me to ensure that my hole doesn't cramp up the blade or prevent the blade from moving properly and everything. That being said, I now need to drill holes that are not too big for um, the mounting screws and also a hole that's big enough to let the blade come through but not as big as to make it all weird. I'm using a 16 millimeter wooden drill bit. That means I've got a formal play on either side of the blade and that will make it perfect. So. Let me do that quickly. And I'm done. Ha <laughs> ha! This works really good, but even better if you have a draw. Ha <laughs> ha! Anyway, so that being done, I need to move on to getting these holes for the mounting into the jigsaw drilled. That's next. For them, I'm using a 6mm wooden drill bit to make sure that if there was any error in my size I have a millimeter to make up for it either way so that's being done as we speak and with YouTube magic I did it again manually unless you don't believe me then I used this one that I love anyway, so they are made and they seem to work just fine so now I need to go ahead and look for a screw that actually fits the same thread as my jigsaw and that's long enough to go through the wood. This wood is a plywood, pressed wood, and it's around, uh, it's a 16 millimeter sheet that's on here. And so the screw I need will have to be, if there's 16 millimeters, I'll need at least 20 mil just to get it working properly, get a good grip and hold and have a space for a washer, the whole shebang, so I'm gonna get that quickly. And they will reappear, one, 
two, three. Ha! That worked. Saves a lot of time. Unless you don't believe me, then I actually just looked for them. Anyway, so they fit in here and they are longer than 20 millimeters or two centimeters. Therefore, they will work just fine. Pop it through from underneath and it should line up with these holes and it just should be a bolt-on system that works perfectly first time around and if I'm lucky that's the way it's going to work so let's do that now going underneath coming in uh, I'm going to need a washer so washer see I buy these in bulk and it's really really cheap so I can use them anywhere that's why I have them it makes my life so much easier to have extras like I said in the previous video do yourself a favor and just get extras let's go for this again that one goes there that one goes there and now sometime in life you will find yourself needing a torch if you've got an organized workshop you'll have one on hand comes through there and now I need to find there it is now using the right screwdriver you should be able to find the thread quite easily okay so that's actually fitted perfectly and if I can just increase the light here maybe you'll see that this lines up exactly with this line thanks to these two being in line so that helps it works now something that you probably find annoying if you're doing this and following along these screws kind of stick out a little bit but it's not really a problem once again because well for what I'm using it's fine if you want to you can countersink these and just make them disappear and flush with the table that way when you push your wood through it will actually not bother you as much currently my direction of this jigsaw this is where my little rough edges are that's the flat edge therefore that will be the direction of my push with the wood now it annoys me that it's not a nice little arrow and now I'm gonna play around with it until it looks better and um, oh whatever looks like a mushroom of sorts but now that's done and now from this point on it is really your own little baby so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly rush through the next couple of steps and give it a skip and I'll show you when I'm completely done with my own custom little modifications which only include a little slot in here to allow for my stop to run around and work that way so I'm going to do that quickly off camera because I'm sure you won't really enjoy watching all of that. Let me quickly get to it and um, when I'm done, I'll show you the progress. Why do I repurpose things? This is the before bit of steel that I had lying around. I'll be using that as my guide. But this is the before. It's all rusty and look at that. Now, let's switch to the after. Nothing wrong with it. It's still steel, it's still fine. So, why not repurpose? Keep in mind that when you clean a piece of metal like this using a little uh, sanding paper on your grinder, it gets hot, therefore, gloves, important. If you use your bare skin, I'm a boiler maker, I get blisters. So, a little pro tip there for you, use gloves, these are pig skin, they are great. And there you have it my adjustable proper little thingy that I can just unscrew release tension and move to wherever I need it line it up on my on the little piece of tape on the side hold it in place and screw it down so it doesn't move and I can push the wood through that's all for me for now and uh, like I always say, have a good one.